Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today I got a bunch of stuff I want to say about the Axie Infinity AXS token. I want to talk about the treasury and about the royalties since royalties have been such a hot topic in NFTs lately. I also want to go on and talk about the AXS staking platform and the upcoming unlocks and some of the vesting schedule and perhaps what this might mean for the price action of AXS. Royalties have always been a hot topic in NFTs and it's really heated up over the past couple weeks because of a couple events one of them being that D Gods, the creators of Utes, went to a zero royalty system. Now, I just want to talk a bit about royalties in Axie Infinity and why they're unique and what the marketplace does with these royalties and why, in my opinion, I don't think the Axie Infinity royalties are ever going to go away anytime soon. First of all, this announcement was followed up by Magic Eden, one of the biggest marketplaces on Solana, also making royalties optional on their platform. And this brings up an important point because as they point out here, royalties are not enforceable on a protocol level, so they have to adapt to shifting market dynamics. What they mean here is that on Solana, on Ethereum, you cannot stop people from selling on a different marketplace without royalties. So they're afraid that if they continue to choose royalties, people, buyers, will not use Magic Eden, they will use a different marketplace on Solana where royalties are not charged. So they feel that they have to make them optional. This is interesting because the Ronin ecosystem is a very controlled environment and Sky Mavis can actually enforce royalties at the protocol level. This is similar to Immutable X. Immutable X is also a layer two to Ethereum that is gated by the Immutable X team and therefore on Immutable X, royalties are also enforceable at the protocol level, something that you can't do on ETH and Solana. Axie Infinity's royalties are also unique because they're not going to the team. It's not a development fund for the team to use. Whether this is good or bad is a topic for another discussion, but what happens is all of the royalties, the 4.25%, goes into the community treasury. And actually, this has been increased to 5.25%. Yes, they increase royalties in order to be able to give 1% to some content creators if you use the content code. So when you buy Axies, all of these funds collected go to the Axie Community Treasury. This is the new community wallet. They recently also changed the community treasury from the old wallet listed here from the white paper to this new one. They announced this in Discord and they're still in the process of occasionally moving some of the funds here. The other big, big important thing to note is that this number is not real. The Ronin Bridge was actually hacked for over $400 million. 56,000 ETH in the compromised Axie DAO is actually under collateralized, which essentially means that these wrapped ETH are supposed to represent a real ETH, but the real ETH is gone and essentially these wrapped ETH are worthless. So the real number in here is about 1,400 ETH that they've collected since the hack. But as you can see, the hack came at the tail end of all the Axie Infinity hype. And so most of the ETH in the treasury was wiped out, which is a real shame because it was never used. The idea is if you stake AXS, you get a say in the DAO and then you can vote on what the treasury is used for, but Axie Infinity has never implemented this system and so the treasury has never been used. These funds have been sitting here and most of them were stolen, which was quite unfortunate. So because Axie Infinity can control this at the protocol level, I'd say it's highly unlikely that the royalty fee structure changes anytime soon. Continuing to talk about AXS, but moving on to a very controversial move that Sky Mavis made recently. As many of you may have read this tweet already, Sky Mavis has taken their 11 million AXS on the balance sheet and they've staked it into the AXS staking protocol here. That increased the total number of staked AXS and it dropped the rewards, the APR, from around 60% down to 43, 44%. Essentially, what they're doing is taking some of the rewards that were going to the community, and now it's going to the Sky Mavis team. Some of the arguments may be for this is that the team doesn't make any money from the royalties, going back to the royalties. So now they have the opportunity to make some money through staking. Essentially, what they can do is collect the rewards from staking, and they can sell those rewards 
and not sell any of the original AXS on the balance sheet, and they can still keep saying that Sky Mavis has never sold any AXS because they're just selling the rewards. Now, we don't know what they're going to do. They haven't said the plan, but that's just a bit of speculation. However, I actually think there's a lot more important information to take out of this tweet. Part of it being that they say there's 11 million AXS on the balance sheet. If we look at the unlock vesting schedule for AXS, you can see that we should have 22 million AXS on the balance sheet. But according to the tweet, if we go back and look at it, as per the original AXS vesting schedule, Sky Mavis has received scheduling allocations of AXS, which I said should be 22 million now. Some of this has been granted to the Sky Mavis team members with a four-year vesting schedule. So essentially what this means is because there's 11 million left, they've granted 11 million AXS to the other Sky Mavis team members. And from this four-year vesting schedule, already 40% of this AXS has been unlocked. So the team members have probably been selling this AXS. I think we would be very foolish to assume that they haven't been because Sky Mavis has granted them the AXS, they sell the AXS, and therefore Sky Mavis can still claim that they've never sold any AXS, making this top statement true, even though, in my opinion, a bit of a shady statement the way it's read. And I don't think the team selling AXS is a bad thing. In fact, they're not getting any royalties. They need to make money. They need to be paid to be employed for Sky Mavis. Giving them rewards in AXS gives them an alignment with the system because they want AXS to do well. They work harder. They get AXS. It makes sense. They should be allowed to sell AXS. There should be no shame in the team members selling AXS, right? But this claim that Sky Mavis has never sold any AXS is true, but you need a bit of context knowing that the 11 million that they've granted to the other team members within Sky Mavis that may have been sold by members of the Sky Mavis team. The other part about this tweet that's important, and I alluded to it a little bit already, is they don't say what they plan to do with the staking rewards that they're receiving. I think what's most likely to happen is they're going to accumulate some of these staking rewards, restake them for a while, and then dump them at a time that is strategic for them, probably with a good news that pumps up the price a little bit so they can get a higher price. I don't know if that's what they're going to do, but I doubt they're going to hold them forever considering they're not getting any funds from any other way at the moment. This was quite a controversial tweet because of how much it lowered the AXS staking rewards, taking a lot of rewards that were going to the community and redirecting them to Sky Mavis. As far as the AXS price point goes, this shouldn't, in theory, really change too much about the Axie AXS price. Because if you think about it, before, Jim was getting one AXS reward every day and he was selling it. Now, Jim is getting 0.6 AXS reward every day and Sky Mavis is getting 0.4 AXS every day. They're both selling it and it's still one AXS of selling pressure regardless. Jim is just as likely to hold AXS as Sky Mavis is likely to hold AXS. And so from my opinion, the amount of selling pressure on the market doesn't really change. It's just that more profits are going to the Sky Mavis side and less to the community side. A more important factor, perhaps, for what the price of AXS is going to do is the actual vesting schedule of AXS because there is a very important date coming soon. The final thing I want to point out in this video, that is October 25th, and this is when there's a next round of unlocks for the AXS token. The last round of unlocks that happened on the 727 was rather small. I've added a few columns to this spreadsheet from the white paper so you can see the exact dates. You need to pay the most attention to the advisors and the Sky Mavis section, increasing the circulating supply of AXS. Because as many of you know, the actual gaming allocation is way behind and the team hasn't given out many of the AXS tokens they're supposed to be giving to the community. They haven't rewarded them yet. So this portion is rather unimportant as far as the AXS price goes, but it is a big increase in the circulating supply. The total circulating supply of AXS is going up from 56% to 64%. And it's a 14% inflation on the current supply of AXS. Now that does account for the gaming issuance. 
the actual AXS potentially hitting the market is not going to be so large because they won't be giving out this gaming issuance right away, and these staking rewards will be developed out over time, but it is a very big jump in the circulating supply, and we can kind of expect a lot more selling pressure after this date if the Sky Mavis team and the advisors sell some of their tokens as is to be expected. No shame for anyone who's going to sell the AXS, but I do think everyone should be aware of this upcoming date if you're invested in the Axie Infinity ecosystem, because this is one of the biggest token unlocks in the last six months, and it could have implications for your own investing strategy. Anyways, that's all I have to say for now. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all very soon with another video.